<laughs> As an athlete, you have a clear identity. I was a rugby player. Sorry, are we starting? <laughs> <laughs> when I went home, I was the rugby player that people spoke to me about rugby. One job. And now, I'm not that. <laughs> I think one of the hardest things I found since I've retired from playing is actually filling out forms and it says occupation. I don't know, I may be a bit embarrassed to say that, oh yeah, I work in the media, because you kind of feel like, a bit like, check me out, but it's not, it's not like that at all. I spent a long time in my career injured, unfortunately, and I hated um, being sat in the stands, not being able to be part of it, wishing that I was on the field. As the game was more televised, there was more opportunities to do other roles, that, so it meant that I was involved in the day. I had lots to think about. I had kind of the pressure that you get when you're about to go and perform, because as they're about to say, right, we're going live in five, or you know, get that like, ultimate panic, just like when you're, you're stood in the tunnel. The more I did it, the more I realised that I could do all right at it. And Daniel Waterman gets first try on the board for England. Daniel Waterman underneath the post. Waterman, so difficult to stop. And it's try number two for England's number 15. What separates Nolly from most of the competition, and I think probably a lot of people will say this was just her aggressive competitiveness. When she stops rugby, her personality doesn't stop. When she is passionate about something, you know she's going to deliver on it. Wanting to do a good job in, in a new environment was super important to me. That's 50% of my brain. So 50% of my energy was spent on wanting to do a really, really good job. But the other 50% wasn't to do with the job itself, was actually to, to prove that I was good enough to be even in the room. And that, I think, is the challenge that females have in the media. When you're one of the first to do it, you feel like not only are you representing yourself, so I'm representing me and I want to do the best I can, but there's this weird side of it that you also feel like you're representing every other woman. You're representing every other woman to show that women have that place in that area and, and that I can show that women are good enough to be there. When you go from the top of your game as an athlete, it's then expected that you can transfer all of that knowledge, all of that experience into the media, and yet it's, you're, you're brand new. You're completely vulnerable, you're stripped bare, because although you've got a lot of the skills to transfer into it, it's a completely different career, it's a completely different profession. As much as you can say, I'm a World Cup winner, I've been to an Olympic Games, I've done what I've done as a player, I've not sat in a commentary box and done World Cup finals. So you're learning in front of, instead of maybe tens of thousands of people, you're learning in front of millions. And that's a, a pretty vulnerable place to be. People like David Flatman, early on in my career, was one of the people that really pushed me to, to believe in myself and just kind of set it straight and just said, get on with it and, you know, just be you. It's too easy to assume that anyone who's achieved a certain amount doesn't have any insecurities or any worries or any apprehension about any of moving into a new world. Of course they do. You probably thought to yourself, oh, well, Flats does all this TV work. He does all this commentary. He's got nothing to worry about. I think about things all the time. I think, well, my CV doesn't match half of my colleagues. My rugby CV is wicked compared to Steve that works at the post office or my dad. <laughs> but compared to Brian Habana or Brian O'Driscoll, my CV's not worth the paper it's written on. So. I then feel there is pressure on me to perform at sort of maximise my potential. So I did see bits of me in you. How important do you think it is, as a father of two daughters, two fantastic young girls, to see women in roles that are predominantly taken up by men? I think it's really important. So, you know, I get to commentate on these amazing rugby games and go around the world and that stuff, and it's great. My kids couldn't give a monkeys. Like, they don't watch it. They're not bothered. But when you're playing or you're commentating, they will watch. So I absolutely buy into the if you can see it, you can be it thing. I think in this world, in sport, I think it's appropriate. When I go over to commentate on women's rugby, I'm a legend. Women come over to the men's game and there will always be the odd Muppet, or a lot of Muppets actually, who say, you don't belong here. And they forget, they don't worry about the quality of your work. You shouldn't be here because you're female. And it's like, no, 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 it's 2021, chief. You know, you're getting blocked. I have played at the top of my game for 15 years. I've played in World Cup finals, I've played at the Olympic Games, and I have a huge amount of experience of the game of rugby. People throw at you all the time on social media. How can she talk about something if she's never played men's rugby? I mean, it's just ridiculous. If we're talking about 
an error or a team under the cosh and they've got five minutes to, to turn a score around. What do you do? What's been said behind the posts when, you know, the opposition have scored and you're in a World Cup final? I can say, as one of the very few people in the game, there's not many of us that have stood behind the posts and been in those positions. So I can talk about lived experience. And it's rugby that I'm talking about. It's not men's rugby, women's rugby. It's actually just rugby. It's Waterman! It's Danielle Waterman! England are the world champions of 2014. You know what, the guys get loads of grief from trolls and it isn't necessarily just about my gender, but there's always a sting in the tail. The way that they describe me, the way that they talk about what I deliver, they talk about my voice in the words that they describe me, they would never use to describe a male pundit. And I think that that's when you can start to see that this isn't about my ability as a pundit, this is about my gender. And as much as they say, it's not because you're a woman or, you know, oh, it's just my opinion, it, like, People don't realise that the unconscious bias that they have. And there was one comment that was made on the back of a, an article that was published about the trolling around me, and it said, well, it's her choice to put, be put in the limelight. And it, it, it made me stop. It made me think about, yeah, it's my choice. And that was probably when I then really asked the question, do I want to do this? Like, why am I putting myself through this? I'm getting tremendously upset about things that are being written about me. I, it's upsetting my family, them seeing the stuff written about me. And, and I think one of my biggest passions is inspiring young girls. And if I'm saying to them, you can do anything, then I've got to listen to that. And I don't know, where, the way I was brought up wasn't that I was any different to my brothers. They just, you know, my parents were amazing and, and actually, they made me believe that I could play a sport that was for boys because I was good at it. But it is hard when you're the person that's the, the punch bag. One of the things that made a massive difference to me with my commentary wasn't the one-off gigs that I was getting, it was actually when Channel 4 signed me for the whole series. And, and Michelle, my agent, said to me, I've never seen a, a channel sign someone up for the Heineken Champions Cup final at the beginning of the season. Nolly has played the game at the highest possible level and won World Cups, which a lot of men haven't. Uh, there's not a lot of people out there who've got her CV. I and mean, yes, you, you can split hairs and say, well, it's the women's game, not the men's game, but it's still just as valid and gives her every bit of you know, expertise and uh, insight that she brings to the game. Our remit is to stand up for inclusivity and uh, inspire change. Increasingly, it's, it's a choice. And, uh, and because there are people out there with the caliber of Nolly Waterman, it's an easy choice. It's very easy to pay lip service. It's very easy to uh, put women in certain roles at lesser games to, to feel like you've done something. But we wanted to, to take it a step forward and make it a regular thing. In so many ways, it was a, kind of a, a no-brainer for us to, to have Nolly through to the end. And she's great at what she does. I think we need to credit the attack from Clermont as well. Um, they were just magical ball in hand, the way that they were coming onto the ball at pace and uh, yeah, finished off some beautiful tries. And it's always good to see a 15 run in a hat trick as well. You know, opportunities have been given to me because in some cases they've been required to have more females um, have that opportunity and, and I've been one of the ones that have been available. When I retired, part of my decision was around the opportunities I could have post-career. I feel it's a privilege to live through the age of the improvement of diversity and sort of the implementation of real diversity. Once they've been given their shots and they have proved that they are worthy of the slot, they retain them, but without being given the shot, they definitely won't get there. They definitely won't get oh. there. Why do you think they judge me on my gender? I got the gig because of my rugby CV. 
you get the gig because of your rugby CV and because we need to have more females on our screens talking about men's rugby. We need to. Why is that so patronising or offensive to say? It's absolutely the truth. You won't continue to get work for the next 10 years because you're female. You get the opportunity, you got a leg up, like I got a leg up, because of who we are and what we used to do. That's what happens, and I truly believe that, rightly or wrongly, you have way more pressure on you than we do. Sport is for everybody, and it's not just this stereotypical man's world, and, and that's the same with, within business. You know, variety is the spice of life, and actually, why would you have all of the same when you can have someone come in that offers a totally different perspective and makes you think in a different way? With HSBC, I'm not just on the women's game, I'm not just on the women's series. I'm out on the HSBC World Rugby 7 Series when it's the men's tournament and therefore my role isn't just about championing the women's game, it's about championing rugby. I think it's important that we realise that if people aren't in those positions, often one of the reasons why they're not in those positions is because they didn't think it was possible and they didn't think it was possible because they didn't see somebody there before. By more women seeing analysts and experiencing how good they are and more men seeing analysts and experiencing how good they are, then it'll just be accepted as the norm and it'll be the new narrative. Growing up, my, my mum always said there's no such word as can't. And growing up with brothers, I was never treated any different. I wasn't their little sister, I was just Nolly. And if I wanted to play and I wanted to join in, I had to be good enough. And I think that set the standard with who I am as a person, that if I want to do something, if I want to take an opportunity, then I've got to be good enough to take that opportunity. And that's then my responsibility to get myself to that, to that level. I think she's going to be a role model because first and foremost, she's just been an exceptional player. And then fast forward to the roles that she's doing now as an ambassador and as an analyst. She's amongst an ecosystem of brilliant women that are changing the game off it from a women's sport point of view and a women's rugby and she'll continue to do so I've no doubt about that. The more we see women achieve the more we celebrate it but normalize it hopefully that message will be the decision to take the opportunity is in your control not in what society is saying that you can and can't do.